Merry Christmas. So glad that we're all here together tonight in God's house to celebrate the birth of our Savior. May God bless our celebration this evening as we hear his word, as we sing it, as we pray. So glad that uh, many at home are also joining us uh, from here in the Vallejo area, maybe Concord. And so if you're at home worshiping with us today, we're so glad you're here. Even uh, maybe halfway across the world, some of you are joining with, with us in worship tonight. As we worship our Savior tonight, uh, we'll hear the, the account of the Savior's birth uh, from Luke chapter 2, that familiar account. We'll sing it uh, in a lot of different ways with a lot of different songs. Uh, we'll hear the children sing about Emmanuel, uh, the Savior, who is God with us. And then we'll, we'll ponder, like Mary, ponder what God has done, what Jesus has done for us. May God bless us as we ponder in faith all that our Savior has done for us. The order of service we'll be following this evening is printed out for you in the service program. It is an order of word, service of word and prayer. Let's begin our worship tonight with the opening hymn, Once in David's Royal City. May God bless our worship. stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I rejoice with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are praising you. 
The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Show us your unfailing love, Lord. And grant us your salvation. The glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all his glory in the life to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us now give our attention to the scripture readings appointed for this Christmas Eve. The first reading is from the prophet Micah, chapter 5, beginning at verse 2. As we observe the theme this evening of a Savior is born to change the world, we hear of where that Savior would be born, in the little town of Bethlehem. And that Savior would be the one who would bring peace to the world. It says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. His goings forth are from the beginning, from the days of eternity. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when the woman who is in labor bears a child. Then the remaining survivors from his brothers will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell securely, for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be their peace. This is the word of our Lord. We now sing about that little town of Bethlehem.
The next reading for tonight is from the letter to Titus, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. One of the things that we might think about as we see our world, uh, trouble all around, good times, but uh, maybe recently, maybe less than good times. And we sometimes wonder, well, what can we do to make a change, to, to change something in our, in our community for the better, to, to make a change at work for the better, to, to make some changes in our school classrooms, where we're students or where we're teachers, where we can make things better for all involved. Well, maybe it's a little bit too simple to say that Jesus, the Savior, is that answer. He is the one that makes things better. He is the one that was sent to make things better, not just make things better, but to make things perfect. Perfect between us and God, even to change our thoughts, our hearts, and then our actions, that through us, he might be a blessing to the people around us, in the classroom, at work, in the community, in the neighborhood, wherever we are. Through these words uh, to Titus, the Lord speaks about the change that Jesus makes, changing our lives even now, but even more important than that, making a change for our eternal destiny. It says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It trains us to reject ungodliness and worldly lusts and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope that is the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people who are his own chosen people, eager to do good works. This is the word of our Lord. We praise God with the angels singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
And now we hear about that birth of the King, Jesus. The next reading is Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governing Syria. And everyone went to register, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the town of Nazareth, into Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and family line of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his wife, who was pledged to him in marriage and was expecting a child. And so it was that while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude from the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward mankind. The word of the Lord. And now sing again as the angels sang, Glory, glory be to God on high.
We now hear the rest of the account of Luke chapter 2, the birth of the King Jesus Christ. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Now let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they told others the message they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of our God. And I'll sing that cradle song, Away in the Manger. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, here in the pews at Good Shepherd, those at home, those across the world, how wonderful to gather on Christmas to hear again about our Savior Jesus, born in Bethlehem, born to be the Savior that we need. Do you ever think about that phrase, the, the Savior that we need. Often as we live our daily lives, we might think about people that we need in our lives. We, we need teachers, young people, right? You need your teachers to teach you things in life, to teach you science and math and literature and, and writing. We need coaches to coach us, to coach our teams to teach us skills, to help us play together, to help us learn to be a team. We need bosses, good bosses that manage well, that understand our work and can, can guide us and can motivate us and, and can help us serve well as an employee as we work together to, to serve the people that we are there to serve. We sometimes need counselors 
people to give us guidance with big life decisions or struggles that we're having. We sometimes need doctors, medical people, nurses to apply miracles of medicine to help us overcome sickness. But do we always recognize that we need a Savior? A Savior has been born to you. As Christ the Lord, the angel said to the shepherds. You ever wonder what the, the shepherds might have been thinking? Might they have been initially thinking that I find myself sometimes thinking is, oh, well, wait a minute. What, what do I need saving from? The shepherds maybe were, were doing well in their role. Actually, maybe not. It was probably one of the lowest roles in society of that day. Usually not the ones that would be welcomed into the social circles in town and, and welcomed to be part of, of groups. They said, you're with the animals. They smell. Just yeah, do your job. And it was an important job. Many, many sheep were needed for worshiping the Lord in, in different ways at that time. But wait a minute, a savior. I, I get along with my, my fellow shepherds. I, I'm humble in my, my role. I'm not greedy like those, those higher ups in the city. I'm, I'm generous with what I have, and I don't have much to, to give to other people, but I'm willing to share my, my lunch with another shepherd or somebody else that, that needs it. I kind of wonder if the shepherds might have been thinking along those lines, wait a minute, a, a savior from, from what? what? What did I do? And maybe me, maybe you have thoughts like that. What did I do? Tell me what I did wrong. We want to know what we did wrong so we can correct it, so we can improve on, on how we live and the things that we do and how we respond to stresses and strains and other things in life. Or, or we don't like to be told that we need to change or we, we did something wrong or thought wrong or had a wrong attitude. And so to be told a Savior has been born, for God to say to you and to me, I have sent a Savior for all the people, maybe one reaction we might have in our hearts and minds is, wait, I need a Savior? Of course, certainly the, the rest of the world thinks more like that than, than we do, of course. The world around there, they don't need a, a Savior at all from their, in their way of thinking. And so we run into that as we talk to other people saying, I'm a sinner just like you. And they say, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you're a sinner, but I'm perfectly fine. I'm, I'm better than most. I, I try hard. I, I try to be good at everything that I do. I'm always working on improving myself. Yeah, the world around us, we hear that all the time. We, we sense that. We see that. And then sometimes, when we see that in others, we reflect on ourselves and recognize that I'm not any different. I can be greedy like the greediest. I can be selfish like those that are most selfish. I can be, be dishonest like the, the dishonest ones we see on TV in the capital cities. I can be like all the world, all the people that really, really need a savior. Someone to, to save them, not necessarily from illness or poverty or oppression, but to save them from themselves from the, the thing that is the biggest thing that, that is the, their biggest problem and my, our biggest problem. 
the thing that separates us from the one, the Lord God that we do not want to find ourselves separated from. Any day or into eternity. And so, yes, a Savior. A Savior to change the world. A Savior to change everyone in the world. To to not make them better or smarter or healthier or richer, but to make them closer. Children of God. To make their them to, to change their status before God, to change their relationship with God, to remove from them what is the biggest barrier between them, between all of us and God, and that is our own condition, our sinful condition. A savior, a savior to change the world, change to change each one of us, to change our relationship with God, to change where we stand with God, the blessed place that we stand because of this Savior Jesus, as children of God, dearly loved, being given promises of of daily bread, even the promise of eternity and all the glory that goes with that, to be given the name child of God with a loving God, a loving Heavenly Father that will never, can never, change his mind about you and me. Because the Savior, Jesus, was sent and carried it out. For the shepherds, for Mary, for Joseph, for the worst of the people in that day, for the worst of the people today, for for you and me. making us children of God forever. That is a wonderful, a beautiful change that the Savior was, Savior Jesus was sent to bring. A change for the whole world. May that change of status before God, may that change of how God thinks about you as a really loved child that made clear in his sending his own son, Jesus, for us. May that fill you, fill me, to overflowing. That the change that God has worked in us, making us his children, that that might overflow, might overflow to the, the whole world around us. That they too might know the peace and the joy that the shepherds knew that night, that they too might know the glory that the angels knew and experienced and were singing about, that they too might know that beautiful Christmas truth that there is peace on earth. Peace because God has made peace with us through his Son, for each day and for eternity. What a Savior that has been born for us. A Savior that changed the world. He has changed you and me. In Jesus' name and to his glory, amen. Let us now join to confess our faith in our Savior Jesus 
And tonight we use the second article of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, we are familiar with that. We repeat that frequently. But tonight uh, we take a little bit more, the, the explanation from the second article that reviews for us as we proclaim it, who Jesus is and what he has done for our life and our salvation. The second article of the Apostles' Creed is on page 10 of the service program. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did, that I should be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. And now we praise our Savior with our offerings. Christians have had a long tradition of an Advent wreath of candles uh, with the center candle being called the Christ candle, a symbol of Christ who is the light of the world. And so tonight as we, we conclude our service with the candle lighting, we remember that Christ is the light of the world. And as that candle symbolizes uh, Christ and his light, uh, there's also symbol in spreading and sharing that light of Christ. We do so with candles, but we do so, more importantly, in our lives as we share the light of Christ in our daily lives, by sharing him, his love, his forgiveness, and his words are with those around us. So if we do that tonight with candle lighting, 
we we'll begin, we do it again tomorrow and every day in our daily lives. May God bless us as we share the light of the world, the light of Christ.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, when the time had fully come, you sent your Son to carry out your plan to save the world from the tyranny of sin, the threat of death, and the power of Satan. On this holy night, strengthen our faith as we ponder the depth of your divine love. Impress on us the poverty and pain your Son endured in our place. How he willingly set aside his power and place and assumed the weakness of an infant and the starkness of a stable. Lead us to acknowledge the sins which compelled his humiliation and the love which he accepted, which accepted his lowliness. Forgive us and move us to trust in his mission to save us. Take away our fears and fright and fill us with joy as we hear the message that Jesus was born for us and that he came to restore peace with you and mend the bond broken by sin. Move us to sing our carols and hymns, not with passing pleasure, but with the depth of praise for his extraordinary love. Let our songs and hymns reflect our faith in the redemption gained by Christ. Lead us to kneel at his manger with hearts of faith and to see there the God-man who takes away the sins of the world. Guide and guard us so that the happiness shared with family and friends does not delay or discourage our journey to his holy crib. Make the birth of Christ our highest priority and deepest pleasure. Fill us with an eager joy that moves us to share the good news with others especially those who may have forgotten or dismissed the love of God in Christ. Give us faith-filled maturity to recognize that the best gift we can give to children is the story of Jesus who was born as a baby and died on a cross to save them for heaven. Move us to tell the good news we have seen and heard. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Lord Jesus, on this night we commend to your care those among us that might be ill or suffering or that their, their setbacks have kept them home this evening. We think especially of Susan Weiler at home tonight. Bring her help and healing and re restored uh, strength. Chuck Philbrook, who had been hospitalized and now in a care home here locally, um, but weak in, in body, keep him in your care. Debbie Shaw, hospitalized uh, today, Bring her healing and relief, enable her to return home soon. And also, Linda Neef, who recently had a broken arm, but is home and, and healing and growing in strength. Keep them all in your care, especially through your word. Assure them of your love and faithfulness. During this busy holiday, provide us with quiet times to remember what the birth of Jesus really means for us and all people, that he came to free us from the evil forces that separate us from your love, that he lived and died to forgive our sins, and that he rose in triumph to prepare a place where we will live with you forever. Move us to sing with hearts of faith, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. We sing Silent Night.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your only Son to take on our humanity and to dwell among us. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by baptism, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. May God the Father bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 